Hey, welcome back. Have you ever wondered how a speaker or a microphone work? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So maybe you are a physics or an AP physics or a physical science student and you want to learn more about speakers and microphones. That's what we're going to be talking about today. How a microphone works, how a speaker works, and in the big picture we're going to be talking about how can someone transmit information through a cell phone. So the first part of the process and the last part of the process have to do with how a speaker and a microphone works. So before I talk about how cell phone towers communicate with each other, I need to talk about microphones and speakers. And they are actually really important. So let's go ahead and get to it. So first of all, I do need to back up a bit and talk about electromagnetism. So electromagnetism relates electricity and magnetism. It's really crucially important. In fact, it's the foundation for all of our modern society. If you think of anything that has to do with a motor or electricity, it's all based on these studies and these concepts, these major concepts I'm going to review with you right now. So here is the big idea. The big idea is a moving magnetic field will cause charges to move in a nearby conductor and a moving electric field from current will produce a nearby magnetic field. So what do we mean by that? So check out this excellent GIF animation from AstroCamp and I want you to see what's happening here. This person has a magnet that they are twisting within a coil of wire that's connected up to an ammeter and what that shows is that there is a current being produced. When you twist a magnet inside a coil of wire, you produce a current in that coil of wire. How does our society use this? Well, anytime our society uses generation, this is how electricity is generated with spinning magnets inside coils of wire. So literally the magnetic fields that are swirling and moving around here are causing these electrons to turn or to move in this coil of wire right here. And shuffling or moving electrons through a conductor, well, that's what electricity is. And that's how we create our electricity that we use throughout our lives. So pretty important to produce electricity, I would say. That's an understatement. Anytime you use a device that uses electricity, it's based off of this generation property right here. All right, and so let's take a look at what's happening here. So you've got the more or less opposite operation happening here. So a current is going through this coil of wire that you see right here, and that's causing a magnetic field. That's making this iron nail become what's called an electromagnet. That shows that electromagnet can pick up other pieces that can be magnetized, like this piece down here. Whenever a current is flowing, you can see that this becomes a magnet when it's not flowing you can see that this is not magnetized, so it actually does depend on the current. What do we do with this as a society? Well, that's where motors come in. A motor has a magnet inside, a permanent magnet and coils of wire, and what that electrical current does is it spins the magnet, and the magnet is attached to something that spins. All right, so it's hard to overstate how important these concepts are in terms of electricity and magnetism. But that's what we're looking at right now. All right, so let's take that background knowledge and apply it in the case of a microphone. So with a microphone, you've got incoming sound waves, and that vibrates a diaphragm right here, like a plastic piece, like maybe a disc inside the actual microphone piece itself over here. What that does is it shakes this coil of wire back and forth across a permanent magnet. So these are kind of loosely looped around a permanent magnet, not attached to it, but loosely looped around it. And what the movement of that coil of wire back and forth allows to happen is that causes these electrons to shuffle back and forth. Now what that means is you've got sound waves that are being converted into an electrical current, an alternating current that goes forwards and backwards, and that is crucial. So if you think about it, that's going to convert sound waves into electrical energy and an electrical set of information here. So pretty amazing. That's what a microphone is doing, and it's based on the electromagnetism idea that we talked about previously. So if that's how a microphone works, how does a speaker work? Well, a speaker works almost in exactly the reverse, not quite, but close to it. So instead, you've got an electrical current right here that's going to flow through the 
coil of wire that's wrapped around a iron core. That iron core with coils of wire wrapped around it is called an electromagnet. So as the current flows through, what that's going to do is cause the iron core to be magnetized. And because this is a permanent magnet over here and you have a cone attached to this electromagnet over here, what's going to happen is as the current goes back and forth, as it changes because it's alternating current at the end here, that is actually going to move the cone back and forth. The cone is going to be attached to the coil of wire and the coil of wire is being attracted and repelled from the permanent magnet repeatedly. Well, if it does so quickly, that sets up a vibration over here in the cone. Now we're getting an electrical signal that is being converted into motion in the cone. And if you have the cone vibrate back and forth, that's going to create the sound that we hear from a speaker. So we have the opposite operation here. Electrical energy is now being converted back into sound energy. It's actually pretty amazing technology. So let's conclude with this. So once again, I've talked about how a microphone works, how a speaker works. And what we still need to do is talk about how the flow of information works between one cell phone and another. But at least you have the idea that you can convert sound energy into electrical signals and electrical energy. And that you can also convert electrical signals or electrical energy into mechanical energy in the form of sound. All right, so please stick around for part two of this where I talk about how this communication works between cell phone towers. And I will say that I am covering all of the major ideas in a typical year of physics. If you have any comments or questions below, let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.